This ain't no race car, guys. Dang. Woo, man, help me. <laughs> Break it. <laughs> nope. Nope. Double lot, son. Watch your Crocs. That That's your best work yet. Cinderella no. sister. Use them really? Croc charms. Oh, yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah, we're yeah. good. Gas it and go, girl. You got an animal emergency. <laughs> That's not good. You any good at wiring? Are you kidding me? We're under a tornado watch. Try and kill her. Ooh. Ooh. You make me want to pull my hair out. Ooh. Oh, Lord. Shout out to Curtis. Burn this thing down. Good, 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 good. Wow. Big donkey. About to get attacked. <laughs> Something bigger is better. Why would you do that? Hog so, leg. Sadness. Can't get up. It looks gonna... bad. Hog leg. What? Are you kidding me? Too legit to quit. Are you? Yeah. Ah! Don't know what that is. Ah! Pretty close. <laughs> Couple fan options. <laughs> Just zip tight, right? Mercy room visit. <laughs> oh, Lord. Squish. What you got? Son. Meg's County Bill of Sale. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Give him the shoe up. Let any smoke out of it. That's <laughs> Contact. Son. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 I love it. Awesome. Woohoo. That's cool. Woo. 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 We may have a tube top in there. Battle of the century. Look straight at it, guys. Hi, babies. Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. We're back with the Fairmont Futura here. Me and Ralphie really love this car. We are dying to get it running. So we're going to start working on some wiring. And a lot of you guys in the last video were like, are you not going to run an alternator? You know, what are you going to do about that? Well, I already had all that kind of thought out. Now, I never did test fit it, so we're about to test fit it and see if my turbo kit misses all this stuff. But I had ordered a low mount alternator bracket. This is supposed to go low on the driver's side. It's supposed to line up with a short water pump. And I actually figured out after I made that last video that uh, it's kind of hard to find a low mount alternator bracket for a short water pump. We're going to see if that will fit with our G one wire alternator so we're gonna try to do all our wiring for our power supplies and stuff all the individual wires that have to actually be crimped and connected to something we've got a lot of our plug-in wires and the engine already in our last video but we're actually gonna run our power wires and ground wires we're gonna try to get a cooling fan on this and we're running this car on a holly terminator x max so it can control our 4l ade transmission which has electronic valve body we also have a msd6 efi ignition box which plugs right into our distributor that we got from them as well so it's a plug and play system i guess let's get started let's find out if our alternator will fit this engine like you guys are worried about thanks for worrying about me so this alternator bracket the only place i was able to find it was speedmaster and it's supposed to work with this water pump it's really nice it's aluminum it was pretty expensive though it was over 100 bucks it was like 100 and almost 50 bucks for this thing they had a lot cheaper ones but they're all for long water pump and this has a short water pump fully set up how's that go ralphie i don't know this goes it goes like that doesn't it but this is where i put bolts all the time it's gonna be really unfortunate if our alternator doesn't fit i should have had it bolted up usually i like to finish the cooling system and all your accessory drive and then build a turbo kit but i also get excited about hanging turbos so yeah what oh boy what are you you got your boomerang yeah they never work for me. Yeah, uh, boomerangs, I've never had one work for me either. They say they come back, but they don't. Yeah, these guys go, go. Oh, I've already dropped something. Oh, it went in between my toes, goody. <laughs> <It's> good. <laughs> Easy to find. Look, oh. yours goes like that too. So that goes in the block, and it has these little eighth inch thick washers that space it off the block. So that does fit this alternator. Now, will it fit underneath there without hitting the turbo? This is definitely gonna be it, you ready? That's too small. <laughs> That's definitely the one. This is definitely the one. Too small. Do we have any one bigger than that? We've had to get the big dogs out, huh? I still haven't found anything that fits it. Yeah, nothing fits it apparently. You didn't come with a tool? No. Oh, finally. So it's a three eighths. If I can do this without dropping it. Not fit. So it's supposed to mount right there we got the top one started and couldn't get the bottom one i think it's hitting the timing cover but 
I'm gonna take the alternator off just to make this a little easier to bolt up. You start the top bolt, and you try to swing this bracket over, it runs right into that timing cover. So I guess we're gonna have to trim this brand new bracket a little bit. We can't get the bolt in. It needs to go over, see how it's hitting. It will not fit, so we're gonna have to trim this bracket. So I marked that right there. It looks like I'm gonna have to trim that. I really don't wanna trim the timing cover because I'm afraid that'll just be a leak. It actually looks like it's gonna hit the oil pan once it's back because we're still really far forward on the block here. So I'm gonna trim for the oil pan a little bit and for that timing cover. I guess I own this bracket now, no matter if it works or not, huh? <laughs> I went flying. Think it's gonna break now that we weakened it like that? No. Oh, there we go. Looks like I need to probably round off that sharp point right there. That looks like it's gonna clear our oil pan and our timing cover now. I wonder what timing cover would fit without clearancing. I don't know. Yeah, that should have not had that metal there. They make smaller alternators than this. Like a lot of drag cars have these little small Denso alternators and stuff. But the problem is that is a lot of them are like 35 amp alternators and we're wanting like a 100, 150 amp alternator so we can run all our electronics. This ain't no race car, guys. It's a street car, okay? I think that's gonna fit, Ralph. Give her a tight there. Oh, here we go again. Rowdy tidy, son. Right, that's tight. You'll get there one year. As he clanks it off everything yeah. under the hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord, no. It's gonna be short. I can tighten it. Oh, that's, you think that belt will fit? Definitely. We got a pile of extra V belts around here. I don't see a number. Oh, there's a number. Fifteen four fifty. Oh, it's too loose. It's gotta be a little bit smaller than that one. Ooh, maybe that might work. Sometimes these belts we keep are not belts that we would probably use again, we, but they're good to, for mocking stuff up like this to see what we need. In? So you wouldn't actually use this actual belt? Oh, I'll probably use it, yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's easier to do the big pulley last. You can roll it up on it sometimes like this. Get on that side and then... Come on, it's so close. This is a 15-430 belt. There we go. Well, it looks like it lines up. So I guess it does work with a short water pump. So maybe a 440 belt will fit it. We now have a charging system that clears everything. A lot of you guys are asking about air filters too. We're just gonna put screens over these. That's what I've ran for years. I actually had Ram air on the LCD wagon. We took a headlight out, went right in the turbo, no air filter, drove it every day to work for like, I don't know, more than a year at least. Never had any problems with it, but everybody was worried about it, but me. First things first, I guess we have to mount a battery back here. It's funny that it has a fuel cell, but it does not have a trunk mounted battery before this point. I'd like to know what's the fastest this car ran. It has full drag suspension on it, it has a fuel cell. I gotta think at some point it had a more serious engine than that little 5.0 that came out of it. Is that a vent? Does that go out and vent down to the ground? Yeah. Where was getting fuel in it? All it is is ratchet strap. I was gonna say, I love this. Yeah, it has one ratchet strap. I see underneath it is two by fours. I guess that's to level her out. Hi, if it works. So I think I want to put it on this side because our computer and everything's on this side. I, I really don't want to run the wires across there. So basically it needs to sit somewhere in here. I really don't want to put it up in there because it's going to make it really, really impossible to put a battery in it. I guess it's probably going to end up right here. I love this big trunk it's got. Does that look right to you, Ralphie? Will you hold these bolts and I'll put the nut underneath the bottom? Okay. Perfect. So I've also got a cover for it, but we're not gonna put that on right this second. I believe I've got some battery cables here from a drag car project Mustang I bought a few years ago and I kept all the spare parts. I basically keep everything. This is a big boy though. Look at the size of this cable. That's like as big as my thumb. That ought to work. We got Wawa holding it back here right at the battery. So that's long enough to get all the way up here if I cut it off right there. So this was set up to have two batteries. It must have been out of a race car, you know, without an alternator. I guess I'll cut this off here and use this at the battery end and then we'll use the other end up here to go to the starter and stuff. She's just He's not even reacting, is he? He don't care. <laughs> Was you worried about your hand getting hot or yeah, something? I was worried about you warming on me. 
What? Say again? Ooh, and it on me. So this thing looks to be like solid brass. And they kinkle dinkled it on there. Somebody did a good job. You're my dill boy. He gets his own chair. <laughs> Every time. Poor Scooty. We really don't have anywhere for this cable to go through. I don't want to run it under the carpet, really, inside the car. I'd rather run it under the car and pop it back up somewhere if I want it. So I guess we're going to drill a hole right here because this plug goes straight into the frame rail. <laughs> She's going to break a wrist. You, you better get that from her. You know she don't do well. She does get hurt a lot. Yeah. Get it going before you push down hard. You can floor it. Okay, you made it straight this through. This is a real dangerous thing here. Straight through to China. You're gonna break it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So we're gonna put a grommet around this. Cause you don't want to rub a hole through the shielding on your battery cable or you're going to have a really bad day see how they did that fuel line there that's not how to do it putting the fuel line right against a rough hole <laughs> if this car was a race car with no interior i would probably just run this right through the middle of the car but since we have carpet and interior and stuff i really don't want to run this big huge thing through the inside of the car and, you know you might have it rubbing against something under the carpet you can't see just keep pushing it until you get it short enough where it's just on the brief of that and polish it from Hey, hey. Right there? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put this lug right here straight to the starter because in the past with my big block cars, uh, especially turbo big block cars with a lot of heat, I've had trouble with them starting correctly when they get hot. So I want to get every bit of juice I can to that little mini starter. Right, Scooty? Mini like you, buddy. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Ah, uh, that is four gauge, and this is double lot, son, just like the buckshot. Double oh, lot. that ain't the real word. It's double zero cable. Look how big that is. This is a slightly larger than the average Caucasian male hand. Oh, please. Look at that. Bigger than my pinky. That's crazy. That's some good stuff. I'm glad I didn't have to buy this. This stuff costs a fortune to buy. So we don't have an end for that battery cable. I'm gonna have to get one in town. We're gonna go ahead and move on to something else. So this is what I bought to do our main powers and grounds. I bought them at like the Rod Run and Pigeon Forge, if you've ever been up there. One of them is gonna be our switch power, which will probably be this bigger one. And then another one's gonna be our constant power sources. Now, one thing you should never run off one of these is your main power and grounds to your computer, like your Terminator X, or if you run any other brand or whatever, they always recommend going straight to the battery cable. So our main powers and grounds for our computer are gonna go straight to the battery cable, but we can run like the power source for our electric fan, our electric fuel pump, other stuff like that, like our lights and stuff. And the way this one works, it has a main ground terminal, so you can run your grounds off this, and a main power terminal you can feed all your stuff off this for your power sources it also comes with fuses and it has like indicator lights when you have a blown fuse so that's pretty cool i'm sure you can buy these off amazon or ebay or whatever but i just happen to buy them at the rod run he's checking it out make sure there's no mises in there we gotta figure out a way to mount all this. So we got the 6 EFI box, the Terminator box, and then our switch and our constant power. Should we make a panel, Ralphie, like a plate? Remember how I did the Starlet? We made like a metal plate and mounted everything to it. If this thing didn't have a heat and air conditioning box under here, I could mount it all up under the dash, but I'd like to be able to have heat. See, there's still a chance this car could have heat. And actually it could have air if I really wanted to go that far. I guess we're gonna have to make some sort of plate or something and mount all that too. You just have to watch your croc so you don't hit my box under there. That's a different kind of two-step when you get that croc stomping that ignition box and she cuts out for you. You might could launch it that way. Get it, get up there on the starting yeah, line. I you I launch it give her the just stomp. Let me, just let me drive. Look, he is worried about it. What's he doing back here? What are you doing? Get out of there, boy. What better thing than the old road sign to mount it to? I think we will use this side though. We used the orange side on the Starlet, and anytime some light got in the car, it would reflect back at you really bad. I did some measuring, and we only have about 14 inches of room on the flat part of the floor. We're gonna have to cut the corner off this thing for it to fit down in here nicely. Right about there. Okay. You go the line, so. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> So this is the one we used in the floor of the Falcon. Wow. That that's your one? best work yet. That's my best work yet? Yes. Well, you cut it. 
I did. I mean, Mom, is your feet any bigger than that there, Cinderella no, sister? No, no. What'd you call me? What? I said Cinderella is what I said. You just said something else. <laughs> Could he get any closer to me? You're such a baby, Scooter. We're gonna make an L bracket to mount this thing to the floor. We've actually never used this cutter. We bought it out of swap meet. And let off of it and we'll bring it back. Ready? Click Good. slice. Butter. Look, it barely takes That's another tool you've kept hidden from me. Well, I hid it from myself. I hadn't used it. We bought it over a year ago and never have used it. You're gonna have to try it out though. That's so easy. Put your finger over. I'll try no, it. No, I'll put my finger in there. You don't even feel it, right? I knew you'd love it. You don't believe how easy it is. No. You cut metal. Isn't that crazy? That's incredible. We should have bolted this thing down a long time ago. For real. So we're going to make this a little L bracket now. <laughs> Use them crop charms. Yeah. All right. So that should be 90 degrees. There you go. Wow. So here's my idea. We screw that down to the carpet. Yeah. And then we'll put this right here and put some self tappers in that. And yeah. you won't see the bracket at all. Yeah. And then we can mount this to it and we'll zip tie it at the top or something. There you go. Oh yeah, that'd be fine. We can't oh, yeah. screw it into the AC box. So we're gonna have to do it something like that right there. Yeah. Heaven forbid we screw something to that dash. You're getting big. Hi. Hey buddy. You're doing good, huh? How's it feel to be a grandpa, huh? <laughs> you haven't been a bit of help on this video. All right, next day we're back. Hi. I think you got enough in there. You think four is enough? I think one would then hold uh, it. Yeah. I know what we'll do. We'll make like a little L bracket to come down from under there. I got a command strip. We're gonna cut this into one inch wide strips and this is gonna be our little L bracket to the top. Oh, that was fast. All right, we need dead on 90 degrees, okay? Looks perfect. Lord, you're nice. You offer a bunch of goats. She held the title in the 200 pound division for several years. I think you're right. So we got a couple of this. Rocky. So we got a couple existing screw under here we're using to mount this with. That'll work right. Perfect. I don't have nothing. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Not this car. What? Interior that C9. poor goat. I'm sorry, Rocky. So I'd like to be able to see the indicator lights. I believe I'm going to mount that right there. That should give us enough room to mount our MSD and hopefully our other two fuse boxes on here. I feel like this is unlike you mounting something before you have it running. I know, well, I've never mounted the one on the uh, Super Coupe still. Let's try and do it right, honey. This is for the one bar map sensor if you're just running all motor, which we're not. And this other plug here is for a drive-by-wire throttle. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. You checking it out, Kenny? Yeah. This may be the most legit wiring I've ever done, you know? It's, it's looking real legit for you. Oh my lord. Gas it and go, girl. I'm trying. So one really trick thing we're doing on this one that I've never done before is instead of using old school relays, we're using this MSD solid state relay. So this is the high current model. You just have a main power in and you can power four different high current devices up to 35 amps per pole here. And you can switch each one of them on by a ground source or a positive source. So it makes it super easy to wire. This thing has overheat protection and like if you over amp it, it'll cut itself off. And once it cools down, it'll kick back on. So really neat 
great way to replace old school relays. Takes up a lot less room, makes a lot cleaner install too. And this also, just like the MSD box and the Terminator X box, has indicator lights saying if there's a fault in the system. So you can sell real quick if you got a problem. This thing can also do a PWM signal, a pulse width signal. So like if you wanted to do a trans brake or if you wanted to do your boost controller, you can do that with this, which you can't do with old school relays. That's cool. Hey. Wait, who needs it? We got an animal emergency. <laughs> Her dad called and said he's got a cow down and he can't get up, so we're going to rescue. Always something. Yeah, always. Never know. Farm life. Oh, I see him down there next to the... Oh yeah, she's down. That's not good. Oh gosh. <laughs> Alright. We've done our good deed. Disaster averted. <laughs> she finally got up on her feet and oh started eating. You any good at wiring? The only casualty was Ralphie lost a croc in the mud. I guess now we're gonna start running wires. You see a white wire coming out of the firewall up there? There's a white, a green, and a red wire. If you can pull them through, we'll go any farther than that. No. What in the world are you doing? Well, I got a thing where, I guess I can't leave well enough alone. It, it was like so nice. There was like a couple wires that went down that way in the tape and then came back down this way. And I was like, I could shorten them up. So I'm Are now you kidding me? Unwrap the whole harness. You could just plug all this stuff in and hook all this stuff up, but I want it to go as short a route as possible from here to there. So instead of it going out that way a couple feet and coming back, I'm gonna shorten it up. Mm. Now that I've unwrapped the whole harness, this white wire only has to be about this long to connect to this. Look at this, I'll have extra wire to wire other things with now. OMG, are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm gonna unwrap that for a half a second for nothing. <laughs> well, instead of it being eight feet long, it's only gonna be like six inches long now. Right there. And look how much cleaner it is now. You stress me out. I love wiring. You're the only person in the world that loves it. No, comment below. Yeah, comment below. Mom's right. I mean, Ralphie loves wiring. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> So I like to use these kind of connectors. They're the crimp style connectors, but they're non-insulated. Then I just put heat shrink over the wire and put them together and crimp them. I know some guys are like solder only. Some guys are crimp. I crimp them together, slide the heat shrink back over and we'll heat this up and we'll be done with that. I like using it this way because the ones that come with like the hard plastic insulation on them, like you get at the auto parts stores, I feel like you don't get as good a crimp and I don't like how thick that stuff is on there. It makes a lot cleaner install this way. This is the white wire coming out from your Terminator X. So it just basically, if you have a points distributor, this is the signal wire for the Terminator X. So it just basically gives it a ignition signal between the MSD and the Terminator X computer. So this red with a white stripe from the Terminator X, is supposed to go to a good switch power source that's a clean source. We're gonna send over here this fuse block, which is gonna be our switch power. But the main power and grounds, which is on this one, it goes straight to the battery. Same thing here, I'm just using these little ring connectors that are non-insulated. Then we toast it. Just like that. That looks so fun. It is fun. So this green wire here is our fuel pump wire, and this will directly power a fuel pump up to 15 amps. But we're gonna have twin Holly 450 pumps in the tank, so they're gonna pull more amps than that. So I'm gonna put this down here to our solid state relay, and it's gonna be our positive signal wire to turn on our solid state relay to power our pumps in the trunk. Now that will kick this lug on to our high current relay, which can run up to 35 amps on this lug. And this is the signal wire for our electric fan to cool our radiator. So it's a gray with a yellow stripe on it. Same thing, I'm gonna shorten it way up. It's just gonna go from the computer straight over to here. And this is a ground signal, so it'll go in the opposite input bar here. So we got it stripped back. It's just gonna go in lug number two here on our ground bar, since it's a ground signal, tighten it down. And then that'll power that right there for our electric fans. This harness right here, if you have a Terminator X Max, is the transmission control. So you won't have this if you have a regular Terminator X like we have in the Super Coupe. But the black wire to it needs to go to a good ground source. So I'm gonna hook it up to this bar right here. Eventually we'll bring in a main ground lug here to a really clean source on the chassis. What in the world is going on? It's just you spaghetti. Know? You like spaghetti, don't you? Yeah. It's but, just like spaghetti. Uh, just one bite at a time and we'll get there. 
I can't wait to get my Crocs in that floorboard. Oh gosh, you're gonna oh, be Lord. kicking wars off, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I will. You're gonna have to sit in the back seat. Ralphie can sit up here. I'll sit in the driver's seat. How about that? Oh golly, you hear that rain? Yeah, I'm about ready to go in. Tornado watch coming. Not only did we have a cow emergency, but now we're under a tornado watch. So I guess this is the end of our wiring for tonight. Well, it's the next morning. We didn't get blown away by any tornadoes or anything, thankfully. I think we're going to go ahead and run our main powers and grounds and get some of the main power run to these switch panels and stuff. Woo! So your main two power wires for your Terminator X are supposed to go straight to the battery. And they give you a bunch. I don't know how long this is. It's got to be at least 10 feet. We got to get a heavy power supply for this for a solid state relay. Same thing. We got to get a power supply for these. One of them switch, one of them not. We may actually run one leg of this to power this one and we need to do our main charging wire and our main battery cable because we did actually get a battery cable end Ooh. we should be able to run these wires up under this carpet right here the msd 6 afi its paperwork says that it can go to the battery or a junction area it just basically has to have a good power source the heavy black one on the msd it says the battery or to the engine so Jamal, do you care if I put some wiring through here? Or are you gonna try to kill me again? It's like, I'm just gonna smack anything that comes through this area. Try and kill her. Yes, he is. I think we're gonna have to go under that though. I don't wanna spend any more time than I have to in this area. <laughs> you should be able to pop it loose. There you go. We've never had this seat out. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's just no wonder Scooter kept getting in this car. There's not a rat yeah. still in it, is oh, it? You better get that thing off. Look, look where they've been living in the seat. Ew. It's just the thing. You leave one parked, that's what happens. They start tearing it up. Look, <laughs> made in China. Just a bunch of paperwork and junk they've been eating. Well, at least it looks like they moved out. You want this? No. Look, hey, somebody paid $1,713 for something. How come everything we buy, we got to clean it up? Well, well I'm going to run it back under the seat here and you pull it through does that read the battery yeah awesome well we got more than enough they didn't cheap out on this did they this way you get a really clean power and ground signal to your computer where nothing's interfering with it because if you get interference in there you'll be chasing problems so do it the way they say please down in africa This is some heavy gauge wire. I don't know what gauge that is, but that's something I never paid attention to much early on. Not actually looking at how many amps what I was putting on it draw and how big the wire needed to be. So you really need to consult a chart like this one right here that shows you what gauge wire you need for how many amps you're pulling and the length you're going. So I'm really watching it with this one. But before I just kind of guessed at it. There we go. So that'll go to our positive like that right there. Obviously the other one will go to our negative. You make me want to pull my hair out. <laughs> I've saved a few wires over the years. Look, look at that battery cable I saved, just in case. That's like, it's a so little. <laughs> oh, Lord. This is going to be our charging wire, I think, right here. I'm glad I kept all this. If you weren't here right now, I'd junk a whole box right there. Hey, you can get some for it, probably. Get it, get it, get it. What are y'all doing? You found an old headlight? Yeah. So we don't have no fancy crimping tool. So maybe a punch would help, huh? Think? Yeah. That ain't coming off. So my idea for my power supply is I'm gonna put this main battery cable straight to the starter. I'm also gonna connect our charging wire to this lug and probably another power wire going up to power all that stuff underneath the dash. That way the starter has the best shot at starting this thing. We have a two gauge that's gonna go up underneath our dash and power everything. And then I've got a six gauge charging wire I'm gonna send over to the alternator. And we gotta thank Curtis for sending these. He sent us a whole box full of battery cable stuff. And we have been using it for the last few months. Shout out to Curtis. We're just too fancy now. Tell you what, you're profesh. Oh. So this six gauge wire is gonna come right off that pole on the starter, right around the front of the engine. 
and right on the back of our alternator here, a little over two feet long, it's not much. So the shorter distance you travel, the smaller gauge you need. That ought to be just fine. I used to put like a 12 gauge or 10 gauge wire as my charging off my alternator. Had all kinds of problems. One day on my Maverick, I put a cable this size on it and it fixed all the issues I was having. All right, just tell me if I hit a wire or something. And this floor is so solid. There is no rust in this car. That's a good change of pace, isn't it? For sure. Right, so right there is where our battery cable is going to run through to power all our stuff. And we'll probably run our wires out from there too to go to like our electric fan. I went ahead and put a grommet on that so we don't have any issues. That way we don't have a positive wire get grounded out and burn this thing down. While digging through all that wiring, I found this big mega fuse here, which is like a main power supply junction block that newer cars use. I'm sure I got off some total car. So I'm gonna use it as a distribution block here. And we're gonna do our main two gauge cable into it. And on the other side, I got this like four gauge cable that we're gonna go off from it to the solid state relay and we'll run some smaller cables up to these two i love watching the heat shrink so cool in that mm -hmm. i wish i knew what this came off of to tell you guys but i have no idea i probably had it 10 years or something this one's gonna be real short there you go, now we have a main power supply for our solid state relay. It'll go right over here to this junction block. That should be good enough to go there because this is gonna be constant power. Don't hit my thumb. I'll try not to. Uh -oh. right? I'm just gonna close my eyes. Give it a punch, I like doing that. Ready? Maybe. Good, 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 good. Just, just one or two. Wow. Swanky, huh? That's pretty swanky. If nothing else, we can get our cigarette lighter off that, you know? The Marbo's call my name. Oh, I was thinking charging the phone. Now. Oh, that too. I decided to run this one off of the solid state relay for sure. The only other way to do it would be like an old school relay. This thing can handle more amperage, so I think it's a better choice. Eyes closed. Don't close your eyes, I'm closing mine. Don't be looking at this, Squeezy. Yeah, she don't get to use it no, for sure. No, Squeezy, no. I like the way that connects. You don't have to put an end on it. One less thing to buy. You may ask, why are we using the green wire on a positive thing? That's just because that's all we had. And now all we'll have to do is put a signal wire over here, either a positive or ground, either one. And when we turn our ignition switch on, it'll turn power on this whole panel. Now on this grounding bar in the fifth position all the way over here, it has a G on it. Now that is the ground for the solid state relay. This doesn't have really any load on it, so it doesn't have to be a big thick wire, but we do have to make a ground for the solid state relay. We're gonna run it right up here to this ground bar we made. You just wanna finish this for me, honey? Oh yeah, I'll hook it right on up. <laughs> You gotta be grounded, you know? Just like life, you gotta be grounded. So this is gonna be our main grounding bar here. Now I'm gonna run this to a good ground source. I think I'm gonna run this all the way to the back to our negative cable that's gonna be in the trunk. Yeah, I got it. How about there? So I also got this big donkey ground battery cable here. I think it's a double lot as well. Right here's our frame rail. I'm probably gonna drill a hole, clean it off really nice and attach it to the floor right there. And then we can also hook up this ground to that bus bar to it as well. It barely fits. All right, you know the deal, Ralphie. Eyes closed. Don't close your eyes. Yeah. What are you doing, Dolly? That ought to be a good enough ground, right, Ralphie? Yeah. The smaller red wire on the MSC 6 EFI is a switch power source, so we're going to put this lug right here. If you just think about it one wire at a time, it's not all that complicated. Just focus on the one wire you're working on, not really the whole thing at once. I went ahead and pulled the fuses out of these ones I've hooked up because I don't want to accidentally hook the battery up forgetting that I should have had the fuse out. We'll probably hook the battery up without these fuses in just to make sure of stuff before we just plug it in all hot, you know, like my father-in-law. And the heavy red wire coming out of there is a constant power source. So we're going to put it to our constant power supply over here. 
Now the heavy black wire on the 6 EFI, it's recommended that it goes all the way to the battery or to the engine block. So we're gonna put ours to the back of the cylinder head on the engine block. So I'm gonna have to extend this wire a little bit. Give it a wiggle. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah, you do, you got it. All right. I guess this one was designed to be mounted under the hood because man, the wire is not very long. Pull it back your way. Keep going, oh, oh. that's about it right there. That should be long enough to reach it there. So that will bolt to the back of our cylinder head right there. So now we have all the wires hooked up we have to hook up for our 6 EFI. The only one that's not hooked up is the gray wire, which is our tack signal. And I actually don't have a tack yet for it. So now I've moved on to the loose wires for the Terminator X. So we've already got our red and white wire hooked up earlier for our switch power source. Now we have our solid red wire. Now this is not the main power wire we already hooked up. This one actually powers the fuel pump and the fuel injectors. So it actually is supposed to go directly to the battery as well. So we're gonna go back to the trunk with it. Keep going. Oh yeah, we're good. So there you go. Now that's connected directly to the battery. Of course, we're leaving everything loose right now. And yeah, now we got some good solid power in the grounds. You're about to get attacked. You're tiptoeing with a line of death here. This is the last loose wire that's required to get the Terminator X running. And it is a chassis ground, so it's supposed to go to a good ground source. We're gonna put it right here to our little ground bar we made. Oh, that's still hot. If you aren't so patient, maybe you should wait a minute, let it cool down. Oh no, it's, it'll be fine. Makes your fingers tougher. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna move on to our transmission harness. Now, if you don't have a Terminator Max, you won't have this harness. We already hooked up our ground to our Terminator X transmission control. Now you have a red and white wire, which is your switch power. You have a constant power red wire. And the gray one actually goes to uh, your brake light switch. So it's supposed to get a power signal when you hit the brakes to know when the torque converter clutch should lock and unlock. So we'll just do a short power wire right here to our constant power fuse block. But you're not actually supposed to hook up the switch power one to the same location as the Terminator X switch one because it can actually back feed from the transmission. So they're supposed to be in a separate location. So what I did to separate those power supplies is I put an old school relay down here. This is the wiring diagram of how the relay works, but basically either one of these can be your signal wire, the 86 or 85. Neither one of these has any real amp load. So it can be a really small wire and you can either send power to signal it or ground. So I set it up where it has a power signal coming from our switch power fuse block into the relay. It has a constant ground on this ground bus bar. It has power coming in from the constant power fuse block and the power going out goes to our red with a white stripe wire that powers to our transmission. Bill Nye the science guy. Bill, 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 Bill. <laughs> science rules. Oh my God. Is it too hey, much for I'm you? I'm burning it down probably. Hey, science, science, science. Bigger is better. <laughs> I would just buy another car. <laughs> Her dad came in a minute ago and was like, why did you do Why that? Why are you doing it? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> it's the next morning and it's very cold. Today might be the day we get all the wiring done. So I'm gonna go ahead and run our power supply wire for our fuel system. We've actually had this a while and never installed it, but it's a Holly drop-in unit. It goes right into our fuel cell, bolts right up to our factory flange, it has a billet fuel cap here where you can put fuel in it still. You got your fuel out and your fuel return and it has twin 450 pumps, which these pumps are serious. I've seen some guys make up to like eight, 900 horsepower with a single one of these and we got two of them. Hog so, leg. Exactly. If you see, you can take this bolt loose and adjust the height of this. You can cut this rod off and these hoses are flexible. So you can, it's already pre-wired and everything. You can change it to whatever height you need to. Comes with a gasket, the retaining ring, your filters and everything you need. Check us out on other platforms at Sleeper Dude 88. And we're gonna run a 10 gauge wire back there from our solid state relay. I guess I'll just take the whole roll here. Sadness. I moved the pins around a little bit on this from where we had them yesterday. So our fuel pump pin is going to be pin number four now. So it'll go right in here. Poo. Is that just like tighten down on the wire? Yeah, you don't even have to put a connector on it. It's really neat. What's with your footwear choices, son? Sorry, I just couldn't find a matching pair. No, I thought we had got past Crocs already. No. You can't just ride the fence on this issue, son. I am. You gotta pick a side. Keep going. I, I know. Right. I just can't get up. <laughs> Are you need help to get out of there? <laughs> what do you need? 
Okay, here we go. That should be enough to run both pumps, but probably until we get this thing really moving, we're probably just gonna run on one pump. There's really no reason to have two just to drive around on low boost when we first get it running. I'll probably set it up where the second pump comes in at a certain boost level and turn it on with the Terminator X. Oh yeah. We'll probably just run this one pump here and then once it hits, you know, whatever, five pounds of boost, we'll kick this pump on. But we'll do that later. We'll just ride this one for now. This thing's pretty old tank. You can see how rusty this lock ring is. Try not to drop. Do you have to leave that lock ring on there? No, no, no. It's, it's built into this new one. So Yay. It looks gotta, bad. It does look bad. So I just gotta take these bolts out. They're spinning on the back side and I'm trying not to drop the wrench. Well, Ralphie did some research and measured this thing. With the dimensions, he found the online calculator and it's this 24 and a half gallon tank. So that'll work out good for like drag week, Rocky Mountain race week, sick week kind of events, you know, drag and drive stuff. Yeah. That'll work out great for that or just going on trips with it. Yeah. Cause we're gonna need the capacity with this hog leg up there. I uh, now I've dropped the wrench in there and it's in the gas. You're worse than me. What? It barely has any fuel in it. We need to flush it out, don't we? We're just gonna take this tank out now that I've leaned over the side and wore out my L4. Flush it out while we have it open like this. Since it's not even strapped in anymore, might as well, huh? Yeah. Can I keep this? Of course you can. I haven't even looked in the car. I wonder what pump was under there. I mean, I'm sure it was carbureted pump, but I don't know what it was. Who knows? This is an awful big supply line. Well, it was a hog leg. So here's everything that comes with the kit. So this ring goes on the back side and it has some really good billet aluminum with some threads. It comes with a gasket and your socks. So we measure this, this is eight and a half inches to the bottom. So we're going to have to be, the pumps are almost dead on, but these rods are in the way, but they have a pre-machined break off point here where you can snap these rods off. And we probably are, once we get the sock on, they're gonna have to move the pumps up just like an inch or so. But all we have to do is loosen this Allen bolt here. We should be able to slide these things forward. There oh, there's one on the other side in there. there. Uh, Ralphie's always showing me the way. You can just slide them up and down wherever you want. Right about there should put us even with the bottom of the tank. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's easier than I thought it would be. It matches right up to our factory uh, bolt holes there. What's the secret to holding this under there at the same time as you do this now? So you're supposed to drill two three sixteenths inch holes so you can zip tie this thing in place. What? Yeah, comes with zip ties. Are you kidding No. So I'm gonna take this feed line out that they had in here. I guess I'm gonna try to find something to plug it with. It has a big rubber hose that goes down to about the middle of the tank and I don't, I don't want it in there. Yeah, so that's their feed line they had in there. Really, electric pumps want to be gravity fed or they want to be in the tank. In my opinion, in the tank is the best situation. It keeps the pump cooler. Everybody I've ever seen who tried to run a pump like this where it's trying to pull it out of the tank and down the pump, it usually never works out. It'll run for a while and then it'll give you problems if you drive it on long trips. We don't need any additional problems no. with fueling. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, You're doing a great job. <laughs> It's a bulkhead fitting, so it's really long threads. There you go. Let's get this old nasty fuel. Ooh, Ew, look Ew. how orange it is. Ew. Yeah, that's nasty. Shoe, green shoe. Might as well dump it while you have it out, right? Any product that comes with zip ties, I automatically have a lot more respect for that company. Exactly. Hey, girl. We doing great. Why do you always like sniff the phone? You have to know by now this is not a treat. They just had this hose stuck over this. I didn't realize it was barely on there. And they were using a bulkhead fitting. I'm actually going to use this fitting right here. We'll actually put the correct fitting on this and run a vent tube off of it. I guess I'm going to have to buy some fittings because I don't have... I need like a 90 degree fitting to go out and put the hose out to the outside. Look at that. We're so legit. Too legit to quit, that's what I heard. So now we can put this in here. We installed this on a return line. So basically, you know when you're washing a car and you got your Dawn dishwashing liquid in a bucket? It's the difference in putting the hose in the bottom of the barrel or spraying it from the top like Ralphie on Jetstream and it makes bubbles there work. You don't want to aerate all that, so we're going to put the return all the way down the bottom so it doesn't create a bunch of air bubbles in our tank. Randy, what are you doing? What? What are you doing? Big rich. Look, our gasket even has the notches for the zip ties. How cool is that? That's fancy. Oh, if I can just keep it lined. 
I love how those things like billet aluminum. It's better quality than what was in here. You gotta love billet aluminum. I don't know what that is. It's a piece of aluminum that they machine out of a solid block. Wow. What are you doing over here by the heater? We have the exact amount of torque right there. It's perfect. This is incredible. It's too fancy for us. It, is I know. Very it looks fancy. like a little oil cap, doesn't it? I bet that's a. I bet that's like an AM thing. I bet that's like a, a 20 AN or something. Hello? Hello? Anyone in there? So this has a 10 AN feed line and a dash 8 return. And I have scoured through every fitting I have to make it work. I'm going to have to buy some stuff to finish plumbing all this because I'm just about out of fittings here. I'm eventually going to have to mount this thing a little better. It just fits in there perfect. It's really nice in there. We may need to cut a little bit of the floor to let it sit down all the way in there. We may end up doing that at some point. I'm gonna go ahead and wire both of our grounds together already, although I'm not gonna run the second pump yet. We're going to a single 10 gauge wire that's gonna go down to our ground lug we already made in the trunk here. We went ahead and put the heat shrink on them, but we're gonna actually heat shrink them later because it smells like gas fumes right here and probably not a good idea. And this is gonna go right on our ground lug right here we made. This is probably a little bit of overkill for a single pump with this big of a wire, but we'll use it in the future when we have two. We're gonna run the power wire for our electric fan now. It's coming up through there, Ralphie. It's bright yellow. Well, I can't see it, so. You ought to see this. Ah! <laughs> bright yellow. I found it. All right, pull it, around the, pull it around the solid state relay. Don't know what that is. Well, we can reach everything, so. So it's in the number three position on this. And this is a 10 gauge wire. I don't know if we're gonna run single or double fans, but we'll get it figured out. Either way, we can run 35 amps to them right here now. So this wire is gonna run up underneath our frame rail and then come up through here and go straight to our electric fan. And then we'll ground the other side of the fan straight to the frame rail. I think your converter's too loose. You don't have enough RPM drop. Okay, sorry. I guess now we're gonna have to find us a fan. So we got about a 24 and a quarter by 19 inch surface area there. On this side, we're pretty close, which we could move it forward maybe if we had to. We only got about two and a quarter inch there. Let's go see what the inventory has out in the barn. Do you have any 19 inch by 24 inch fans out here? <laughs> you do? Is that here sun in it? What are you doing, Buckwild? <laughs> You're getting your horns, aren't you? So he comes out here to get away from Mama? Yeah. So he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. You're getting your horns, aren't you? That's a good baby. So we got a couple fan options here because I worked in the auto body industry. I'd love to run this guy here, but it's got three wires. I think it's PWM fan. It has to be pulse width to control it. We may try to do that though. See all these ones with these big back covers that are metal like that, all have like a three wire hookup with a pulse width. You can really cool it if you have one of those, but that's like off of a big Yukon or something like that is what those are off of. And they're way too big for our radiator. Basically every one of these dual fans we have is too wide to run. So we're gonna have to run a single fan unless we wanna cut the whole front end off the car and put an enormous radiator in it both of these are like 18 inch fan blades this is out of a kia stinger here and this one i don't know it's uh also a hyundai and kia fan this has a what appears to be a normal electric fan motor with a pulse width modulated controller so we have two options on how we could wire that one this one only has a pulse width motor and i would have to figure out how to wire that in but it's got a four wire hookup instead of a two wire hookup i think we're going to take them both in that way we have some options on what to run see if either one of them will even fit we're going to take a couple smaller options too here's a kia rio fan i don't know what this one is here that way we have a backup plan too ralphie has found <laughs> this like i don't know climbing harness deal so he's probably gonna live in that for a while okay everybody sees you they know you're here they know this is what you've needed honey a leash for him this is perfect we'll come back and get to you when it gets dark okay <laughs> Come on! Stand up. Oh, a spider! Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I got you! Don't ever do that! 
barn fan number one. If it has any chance, it's gonna be this direction. That's looking like a no go. no go for sure. No way. So those big ones probably aren't gonna fit. Hey, that'll fit. I have this one too. I really don't like the way the shroud is built. I don't know what it's off of either. And it would definitely fit, but see, I really would like something that would cover, in my opinion, the best way you can run an electric fan is like this right here. A shroud with baffles. If you have a shroud that covers the whole core, you will usually not have overheating issues in town. But if you have a shroud that covers the whole core and blocks air on the interstate from going through, you'll overheat on the interstate. So the baffles fix that problem. So a big shroud, big fan with baffles. This is the best design I, I believe there is. Uh, I don't think that's gonna fit though. Yeah, unfortunately that's too thick it looks like to get in there. Not tore, oh, okay. All right, all right then. Maybe we can make this work if I cut this off. It just barely fits, but it does fit if we can figure out a way to mount it. I wish I knew what it was off of. I just know it's a Kia or a Hyundai. I might make some like rubber flaps for it. Look at that, it fits the core like basically exactly the right shape. This is the one that came with this box. So if we can figure out how to pulse with it, we'll do that later. But it is a regular fan that has a two wire hookup. It's perfect for our turbo on this side because this one's actually closer to the radiator. Perfect for this one. You build a big block turbo car, everything's about a quarter of an inch from everything else when you put it together. Shoot, we've just zip tied, right? I've seen that done before. You have? Mm-hmm. Somebody else's shop? No, this right here. Oh. Are the kids still boinging out there yes, on the- Yes, probably, we're probably just a few minutes away from the mercy room visit. <laughs> oh Lord. My wife is requiring that I clean this fan before I install it permanently on here. You're welcome guys. <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all doing out here? <laughs> what? Like Mission Impossible. Look at that. There's what? a lift and we got a hook. Oh, Lord. Kind of scary drilling towards the radiator core. Woo. That's mounted. Now we're gonna make sure this thing does work. I think it's running backwards. Yeah, you try it the other way. Yeah, there we go. So this side is the power and that side is the ground. There we go. That's what it'll be like when it has actual power up to it. Quit! How about this? <laughs> yeah, let me get your hairs. Real hard. Squeeze. All you got, let's see it, all you got. Okay. I like using a crimper like this. It is way, way better than using these. These are so narrow that usually it won't crimp good. I really like a wide crimper like that. Fun, we should have a good ground there. Now we have power and a ground for our fan that will come on at whatever temperature we want it to. We can program into the Terminator X. We need a way to start this thing. And Curtis sent us a thing that had a switch and a push button to start. But I really don't want a car that's that easy to steal. So my plan is to use the push button out of the kit because these Fords, I know from swapping them before, it's like impossible to find a wire that has power with the key in the on position and cranking. So they usually always kill power during cranking. So what I plan on doing is using the key, when it comes on, it'll turn on our auxiliary power and we'll just leave it in that position, in the on position. And then we'll start it with the push button. So you'll have to have the key to start the car still. Son. Golly. I threaded that, didn't I? And you thought Christmas was over. 
So one of these wires is gonna go out to our starter and then the other one is gonna go down here and we're gonna hook it to constant power because sometimes you wanna be able to bump it over without the ignition on, like if you're adjusting valves or anything. With us having to have a key to start this thing now, that way somebody just can't come up and pick it up with the old Meg's County bill of sale. If you didn't know, the different colors are different gauges of wire. So the pink or red ones are the smallest ones. Then there's the blue and then there's the yellow in that order. It's a big thick wire and it's yellow. Okay. I got it. Yeah, okay. You know he just got in your car. Rocky? Rocky, no. No, this one has good Go ahead, here. lay your pebbles in there. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Come on, Rocky. 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 Plug this in right there on our starter. And there's a very important thing that we have yet to wire in. Well, I don't know why we've overlooked it this long. What? The cigarette lighter. Oh. We gotta have one of them. I mean, how else are we gonna charge our phone? I thought she thought. What were you thinking? I thought she was talking about Marlboros. No, no Marlboros. You the wire inspector? You get wires, leave mine alone. So we're feeding the cigarette lighter off of this constant power source because I want to be able to charge my phone even when the car is off. And we're going to do the ground on the bus bar here. You think that's good plan, Rocky? How convenient is it that this has the Dollar Gentle cigarette lighter add-on down here? Yeah. I like that. Convenience. This is how we keep your lips soft. Yeah, put them on your lips. It's good. It's good for your lips. Your girlfriend like it. Well, we got a little church thing going on tonight, so the rest of this is going to happen tomorrow. Do the shoe ops. I can't. Yeah. People want to see the shoe ops. <laughs> Give them the shoe ops. Shoe ops? We're back. It's the next day. We got to get the main power wire that powers everything under the dash so we still have like working fuse box from the factory fuse box and headlights and blinkies and stuff. And I was looking at it. It looks like it's this right here. So we got a yellow wire and a black with an orange stripe. Looks like it went straight to the alternator lug. So we should be able to hook that back up and power everything that we need to power under the dash. So we got that wire hooked up down there. It's kind of hard to video where it's at. I guess let's hook the battery up and see what happens. See if we let any smoke out of it. So they only put a certain amount of smoke in stuff like this and if you let too much of it out it won't work anymore and you they don't really let you know how much smoke is in them either they don't like put that in the paperwork Stupid. <laughs> You're such a so we just don't want to let out too much smoke you, yeah. a little bit sometimes you're all right but you let out too much smoke it's a done deal dad you're a dingus I also just hooked up the factory ground strap from the firewall to the engine. So we do have a ground strap for that. Even though this engine is solid mounted, you still want a ground strap on it. I'm a little nervous. Are you guys nervous about no. plugging all this in? No, not at all. Not at all? I'm just gonna step back about 10 feet, you know? I think I'm gonna disconnect the main power to the computer just so I don't burn anything up by hooking it up. Okay. All our fuses are still out. So this is just gonna send power to our main wires. We'll see if we let any smoke out of that. And we'll start hooking stuff up one at a time after that. Contact. Oh, I see a red light on. Anybody see any smoke? No. Before I hook any of this up, I'm gonna find out where the switch power is off the key. Oh, you got lights. Uh, what? Light. Oh, we got a radio, uh, a radio CD player. Oh, it's, it's working. Sun. Score. Does it got anything in it? Hey, yeah. Does it come out? What is it? Oh. The very best of the animals. Yeah, that's a good one there. That's like, they do House of the Rising Sun, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that we have no one. speakers. Anymore. Maybe we don't have any speakers hooked up. Sadness. I'm getting nothing out here. Hmm. Maybe harder than I thought. In the process of looking for a switch power source off the key, I did find our brake light switch. This is power in, this is power out. So we're gonna hook up the gray wire from the transmission control harness, and this will unlock our torque converter when we hit the brakes. We're gonna run out of butane, huh? Yeah. As much as we've been crimping stuff. Huh, our headlights work. They both? Huh, we got wipers. Huh, bright lights work. Every spare wire I can find, I can't find one that's loose that has power only when the key's on. But I did find a fuse here that I don't think is running anything. It says engine warning lamp fuse. We may find out that it ran something later, but for now, that's gonna be our power source to turn on our solid state relay, kicking power to our switch power fuse block. 
When she turns that on, we should get power. Hi. Right. So now we have power here and there. You're a genius. I'm not a genius. Yes, you are. Uh, You're so smart. I guess let's start hooking power up to the oh, Terminator Lord. X stuff. We're just gonna go ahead and hook up the main power supply to the Terminator X here. So if I put this fuse in here, this should turn on the switch power. Turn the key on, Wawa. All right, that should turn that on now because hey. it has a fuse. So this right here puts power to our transmission control, to our 4L80E. So this would turn on the relay for the transmission control. This big heavy one here is our starter. Okay, that's the power source for the transmission control. I'll just put a 20 amper in that too, I guess. We can't forget to put power to our cigarette lighter. So this is switch power to our MSD 6EFI. The only thing we have left is the main power wire going to the 6EFI. Now, everything has power, all our fault lights went off. So it's asking us to do a TPS auto set. Make sure ignition is on and the engine is not running. Our engine is not running. It doesn't even have oil in it. We're gonna say, okay, start. So it says slowly press the pedal to the floor and then slowly release, do it twice. All right, Wawa, that's your job. All the way, then go back and then do it one more time. Auto set was successful. So now we're gonna go back into the wizard and we're gonna do the GCF wizard. And we're gonna tell it all the basic things about this engine. We're doing multi-port fuel injection because this is not throttle by injected or direct injected. So we're gonna go with universal, eight cylinder. So this can run basically any engine. 18436572, that's big block Chevy and small block Chevy firing order M Opar Gen 3 Hemi. We're gonna go with cubic inches and this is not 10 cubic inches. It's not 2000. It is a 454 target idle speed. We'll just say like 800. Cam duration. So I can't remember what the cam specs were. So we're going to go to the video from uh, December 2021 when we put this engine together and see. Look at that guy. He's clean cut, isn't he? Wow. Look at your hands. Look at that guy. Is that the same shirt you have now, Robbie? That's the same shirt. Oh, look. Yeah, so we're wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Burn my biscuits. <laughs> so this was an $87 camshaft. We kind of hit the middle of the field. 228, 238. We're going to go with the first option then. Yeah, we have a Holly dual sink distributor. Our fuel pressure is probably going to be around there. Injectors are Holly injectors. And we have the Holly 220 pound injectors. Now it's asking us our power adder top. We got a turbo on there. Times two. Choo choo boy. <laughs> we have a Holly three and a half bar map sensor and our intake. Now it's going to ask us, wide open throttle ignition timing at no boost. Well, big blocks usually like some timing, so we'll say like 36 degrees, wide open throttle, no boost. Retard per pound of boost. This shows you what your timing will be at different boost levels. We're non-intercooled, but we're going to be running on ethanol. At 14 pounds of boost, I'd probably want about 14 degrees of timing, something like that. So we'll be pretty aggressive with our timing retard at the beginning here. We'll say a pound and a half. That'll give us a pretty aggressive one where if we ever do hit 20 pounds, we're only gonna have four degrees of timing. That keeps it pretty safe. Wide open throttle, target air fuel, I put it at 12 and a half. That's pretty good for an all motor setup like that. So this is the offset on the air, air fuel ratio. I like it to be in the 11s and then like higher boost levels, you may even dip down into the 10s on air fuel. So I'll do a little bit of offset here to where it gets pretty fat. That's pretty good, 11.0 if it hits 21 pounds, I'm okay with that. Drive-by wire, no, this is drive-by cable. Idle air control is a GM LS style. Transmission control, yes. We have a 4L ADE, which we haven't plugged in yet. They got cursing words on here. I think it's got about a 28 in the back. Rear gear ratio, I don't even know. We're just gonna guess at some of this stuff for now. So this is what can give you an accurate speedometer on your digital dash if you want. We'll say 327 for now. And I guess this is the name for the file. So it's loading that to the computer now. Please cycle the ignition to complete this operation. So power off. You seen all the lights go out there. Power back on. You hear that? Fuel pump kicked on. It's working. So. <laughs> I wired that right at least. So our fuel pump Good did job. keep going. Well, that's awesome. There's so many things that are working. I know. Man. So we know our fuel pump works. We're going to see if our fan works here. We're going to go tuning, system, outputs. All right, there's fan number one, which should be wired in here. We're going to drop this down to a temperature below what the actual temperature is out there and see if the fan kicks on. We're going to say kick the fan off when you get to negative 40. And we're gonna say kick the fan on if it gets to zero degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> I 
I love it. Now. It worked. Oh, I love it. I know how you do all this stuff. All right, I better turn that back off though. There you go. Turn it off. <laughs> well, let's take a look at what our sensors are saying. We're going to monitor multi-gauge let's look at our sensor inputs here 99 kpa which should be correct that should be outside pressure of the atmosphere coolant 63 volts are 12 and a half manifold air temp 63 ignition timing 15 degrees outer control 91 yeah so we got everything working awesome i'm gonna turn the computer off now and i am going to bump the starter now we have no oil in this engine the oil pan just has like two bolts in it. so all i'm gonna do is just barely bump it because i do not want to spin this thing a bunch uh -huh. <laughs> that's the extra air that's just air coming out of the cylinders oh that's cool we did it Woo! <laughs> I cannot believe it, actually. I, I thought it would take a lot longer to wire, especially. Everything works. Even our cigarette lighter works. Well, that's a must have. I am surprised that, you know, you did it on the first time and everything worked. I thought there would be a little bit of like uh, carpet no. melting, I didn't, I didn't, a little bit of smoke. I didn't doubt him once. Carpet melting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this thing is so close to getting on the road. That's it's, it's getting road. way closer. So I was really hoping that I could plumb this thing in this video as far as fuel system and stuff goes. But unfortunately, I do not have as many spare fittings and hoses here as I thought I did. So I'm gonna have to order a bunch of stuff for that. So we'll probably get a bunch of stuff coming from Earl's for the fuel lines and fittings. I've also got to make radiator hoses, but this whole thing's gonna come back out. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> There's no way <laughs> so I can take it out. It does have a transmission in it, but it's just a mock up. So we still have to get a drive shaft made for it, swap out transmissions with a good one, which the one in the van out here is supposed to be a good one. We already have our brand new Circle D converter. All that is stuff that we will do in the next video. We're getting really close to getting this thing running. Yeah. I can't believe everything worked. It's awesome. I really I can't. Would. Good job. Woo! Thank you. This one was easier than the Super Coupe. Like the Super Coupe, we were doing a six cylinder engine with LS cools and everything and, was mismatched and, stuff. So if you have something like this, big block Chevy, small block Chevy, small block four, big block four, whatever you got, Mopar, you can hook all this stuff up. And if you get like the dual sync distributor, it can plug right into your harness the same way this one did. It's all plug it up, hook up your powers and grounds and you're done. You don't have to really do a bunch of crazy wiring. I mean, if you didn't want the programmable on off outputs like we have in there, you wouldn't even have to do all that. Yeah, you know? he's, a, he's a little bit extra with some stuff. Yeah, yeah, it could have been done a little quicker than what I did it because I really went a lot extra. We're gonna go back and loom all this later. Probably once we final install everything, we'll go back and loom it. And we'll go back and hook up the transmission when we final install it. It only actually has three plugs. It's just these three guys here and you're plugged in and ready to go. Super shiny, super You can do it, guys. If you got a car like this, it's not that hard to do. I am ready to get to the racetrack of this thing. I wish we could go right now, but we're getting so close. This is like the first point where I felt like, hey, this thing might run really soon, you know? Yeah. We still have a lot to do, but we got all the hard stuff pretty much what done now. What are you now. doing? Pour one out for your homies, y'all. Exactly. Eat your bourbon barbecue vein, just drink your RC Colas. They're healthy, right, Squeeze? Yeah, yes. See, exactly. I'm hoping this thing will run good when we get it all together. Really, the engine, we just gotta take the engine back out, both the oil pan on good. We gotta do our oil drain backs for our turbo. That is something we gotta do when we have it out. That shouldn't be too hard to do. We're shooting for somewhere, it ought to be making over 500 on motor, and we're shooting for under boost, non intercooled, probably in the little over a thousand horsepower range. Right, baby bird? No. Yeah. If we eventually get some intercooler on here, we should be able to go as high as like 1500 if we want to. We don't break the block. Mm, that's that good stuff, huh? We're gonna get back on the Galaxy Wagon. Woo! We're waiting on one more piece and we can start on it. We got a bunch of stuff that's came in for the motorhome. So that is gonna be real soon too. The parts for Ralphie's Corvette, I know we've been talking about them for a Woo! while, but they are supposed to be here in two days. So we got tracking on them. Woo! I gotta get some casings for it. We also need to get to pulling that engine out of that Mustang and put it in that thing, huh? Yeah. Falcon needs a big 5.0 in there. Need the five lug swap and stuff. We got lots of projects around here. But we're finally getting to the point where some of them are like actually, you know, drivable now. That's nice. But you can check out our second channel app. Sleeper YouTube. <laughs> you, 
Yeah. You, what's so funny? I, I, I was doing this, like, shitting on elbow pops. And, uh, yeah. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at SleeperDude88. You can check our merchandise out down below. We got all these new shirts right here you're seeing right now. If you click on the shirts down below, it'll take you to Spring's website. We got coffee mugs, hoodies, leggings. Tank tops, don't we? What? We do have some. We may even have a tube top in there. I don't know. <laughs> You'll find out later, so. What's a tube top? <laughs> but we appreciate you guys watching. Thank you to everybody who watches our videos. Thank you for commenting and liking the video. We hope you like them. We try to keep it family friendly around here, work together, figure stuff out. I gotta teach them how to do wiring, right, guys? Yeah. This guy loves his wiring. <laughs> Thank you to all our members. We really appreciate all you guys. It really helps us out. Thank you to everybody does super thanks. That really helps as well. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have a job. So I really do yep. appreciate it. I get to work on these awesome cars every day because of people like you. It means a lot to me. But I guess let's go out here. We only got one biennial left. Who's gonna That's get That's gonna it? be a fight. That's oh my gosh. Gonna get Battle it. of the century right this here. This is not gonna be good. Yeah. Look, look at the whole herd. New baby and everything. Where y'all going? Usually they're over by the barn. Look at how far out she is. <laughs> But here she comes. She's still going. Wait, she run that far. Rocky, you gonna get it from before she gets to it? She's quick. She's quick. He got it. Here, you can have the juice, Granny. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, looks look straight at it, guys. Look straight at it. Oh, it's just like the lady in the tramp. There you go. She's a little a little calmer today. They're like, hey. Where's my treat? Hi, babies. You don't usually get to see them. Remember, you can do it. It's just one wire at a time. Don't use them wire nuts, okay? I've seen y'all. Who cuts the cheese? You is kind, you is smart, and you is impotent. She was talking about me. Trust me, I know. Bye! That's incredible. Best part of the video. What's his name? Johnny. 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 So his name is Johnny. Johnny. I named him Johnny. Johnny okay, Johnny. Bam, bam. Rocky's grandbaby, Johnny. Tell him bye.